Some of you that have been looking from left to right to find help. Looking up to Western nations to come save us. Looking up to the government to come save us. Looking up to a specific leader to come save us. I just want to tell you that it takes one to bring about transformation. It doesn't take many. It took one to change things in America. Rosa Park, an ordinary citizen that sat in the bus and said, I am not going to wake up and give my seat to a white man. I am not going to do that. One person sparked up a revolution in America and brought about transformation. And the consciousness of racial equality was initiated because one woman sat down and said, I will not wake up and give my seat to you because of the color of your skin. And the revolution started. You have the power to bring about transformation in Cameroon if you understand why you even exist. This is what hope does to an individual that believes in a better tomorrow for their children, for their community, for their existence. They are willing to stand up and do things the right way. Hope is a vision of the future that changes us in the present. That regardless of the circumstances that overwhelms us, we will decide to be a different people because we believe in something better. We believe in a bright future for our children, for our community, for our nation. We see something different. And because of that, our attitude and our action changes in the present because of what we see in the future. I started a business in Cameroon. I've run businesses in Cameroon. I've run a business right here in the United States of America. Besides going to the seminary, I've also gone on to do an MBA that is a master's in business administration with a concentration in finance. I've read extensively on politics, human behavior, psychology, business, negotiation, and all of this prepared me for this mission to help our nation be great. Greetings, friends, uh, wherever you are joining us from right now, this minute. I just want to welcome you, Cameroonians, both home and abroad. This platform is designed for Cameroonians below the age of 40 who believe that we can achieve peace, unity, freedom, and prosperity in Cameroon without violence. If you are above the age of 40 and you believe in this vision, we welcome you. If you are above the age of 40 and your strategy to achieving prosperity in Cameroon is through power and violence, then this video and this platform is not for you. Most of you who have heard me speak have asked questions like, does it mean those who are above 40 are excluded from this mission? And I thought I'd bring clarity to that before we proceed with the message that I have for us today. Scientifically proven, those above the age of 40 are adamant to change. But if you have developed a growth mindset before 40, you are receptive to change. That is, this new trend of thought is something that can penetrate your soul. 
But if you are above the age of 40 and you have a fixed mindset, then change is hard to penetrate your soul. And that is why through my research and studies on this vision and this mission that God gave me for Cameroon, I had to come to the understanding that those below the age of 40 will be very instrumental to bringing about transformation in our nation. I want to talk to us today about hope because hope is the only thing that will keep us through this time of turbulence. Hope is the only unique factor that we need in a time such as this. Our nation has gone through a lot for the past seven to eight years. We have IDPs everywhere around the world. Individuals that are displaced, some of them have lost their relatives. Some of them have lost their homes. Some of them have lost their source of livelihood. This is the predicament that our nation is facing. And all of this is encapsulated in an ideology that we believe will bring us freedom. But this ideology has turned to cave us with lost people. And now we are where we find ourselves today. But hope can elevate us from where we find ourselves right now. And if there is any message that should be preached to every Cameroonian, both home and abroad, is the message of hope. The message I want to share with you today is titled The Science of Hope. That is, hope can be learned. It is not an art that is reserved for a few. Hope can be learned. Reverend Roland Fru is my name. I was born and raised in Northwest Bamenda. I share your grievances. I share your pain because I grew up in the same circumstance. I grew up with a similar understanding like the one you have about Cameroon. But I want to say, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Some people have asked the question, why don't you speak the truth about the government? Why don't you speak the truth about the circumstances that our nation is experiencing? And I repeat again, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Everyone is talking about the government. Everyone is talking about the bad political system that we have in Cameroon. My question to every Cameroonian is, has this strategy worked? How many of you have succeeded to persuade your enemies to become friends using this strategy? If we are heading towards a direction and we realize there is a gridlock, don't we think we should reevaluate, examine our strategy, and pivot? Most of our young people have lost hope. Most of our old people have lost hope. Something, the only way for us to achieve freedom and prosperity in Cameroon is the way we are going. Question, how has it worked for us? What is the science of hope? The science of hope is a multidisciplinary field that explores the psychological, neurological, and physiological aspect of hope, as well as its impact on individuals, their well-being, and behavior. Hope 
is a vision of the future that changes us in the present. That regardless of the circumstances that overwhelms us, we will decide to be a different people because we believe in something better. We believe in a bright future for our children, for our community, for our nation. We see something different. And because of that, our attitude and our action changes in the present because of what we see in the future. I started a business in Cameroon. I've run businesses in Cameroon. I've run a business right here in the United States of America. Besides going to the seminary, I've also gone on to do an MBA that is a master's in business administration with a concentration in finance. I've read extensively on politics, human behavior, psychology, business, negotiation, and all of this prepared me for this mission to help our nation be great in the private sector. You can transform Cameroon without being the president. You can be an extraordinary human being in that nation without holding any position in the government. And that is my message for us. Many of you have heard me speak and you think somehow this is all connected with the government because the paradigm is that if there is change, if change ought to occur, then the government must be involved. But you can initiate change without necessarily being part of the government. And that is the responsibility that you have as Cameroonians. You've discarded this power. You've minimized this power. Some have told me this initiative of taking our GDP from four to five billion US dollars to one trillion dollars in the next 20 years is unachievable because the government will get on our way. And I have a question for those people. For the past seven to eight years, we have collectively put our money together and buy guns to fight this war. My question is, did the government stop you? Those who think they need government funding to transform that nation, this war that we have been fighting for the past seven to eight years, did the government support you for this war financially? These are questions we have to reflect on. We have imposed ghost town for the past seven to eight years. Every Monday, people have sat in their homes. My question to you is, has the government stopped you? If you genuinely want change for this nation, we can achieve that if we are determined. If we can come together for something negative, we can come together, put our money together for something positive. That is hope. We were all motivated by hope for a better future. And that is why we were able to put our money together to buy guns for this war. We can put our money together and start businesses, operate companies, transform the trajectory of our nation. And that is the message I bring to us all. The science of hope. You can learn this. So hope is a vision of the future that does not just changes you, but changes the world, but changes your nation. And this is scripture for you. 
John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Many are familiar with this verse. But it is very important that we look at the very next verse. 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God has called you not just to save you, but that through you, the world can be saved. That through you, Cameroon can be better. Not just you hearing this message, but that as you grasp this message, through you, your community can be better. Your family can be better. Not to condemn Cameroon, but to liberate Cameroon. Not to condemn the government, but to liberate the government. Not to condemn your leaders, but to liberate your leaders, liberate your communities. Approach. And I want to say, those who have opinions as to how things should go, what I should say, how I should conduct myself, and I want to remind you that the God that you serve, Jesus Christ, the architect of Christianity, when God brought him on earth to save the world, the Jewish authorities, the Pharisees, the Sadducees had a perspective as to what Jesus Christ should say and should do. They thought he would have an army that would challenge the Roman authorities. They thought he would be confrontational towards the government. They had ideas on how he would go about bringing the salvation. But God sent him with a strategy and a message of hope. If what you think I should say was sufficient, then that nation would be better. If what you think and what we have been doing was sufficient for the past seven to eight years, then this nation should be better. What we have been doing is not working for the past 50 years. And we should change our strategy. And as you hear this message, you should go out there and spread it across your communities, uh, across your families. The reason is, Cameroon will be a better place if we come along with our relatives, our friends, our business associates. If we come together on this vision, Cameroon will be a better place. God did not just save you so that you can be free from sin, God saved you so that you can save others. In other words, Christianity is sinners. One beggar telling another beggar where he found the bread. I repeat, I'm not perfect, I don't have it all together. But I'll be consistent, I'll be stable, and I will communicate. I will not be perfect, but we are going somewhere together. We got to trust the process and bear in mind what we have been doing has not been working. And some of you that have been looking from left to right to find help, looking up to Western nations to come save us, looking up to the government to come save us, looking up to a specific leader to come save us. I just want to tell you that it takes one to bring about transformation. 
it doesn't take many. It took one to change things in America. Rosa Park, an ordinary citizen that sat in the bus and said, I am not going to wake up and give my seat to a white man. I am not going to do that. One person sparked up a revolution in America and brought about transformation. And the consciousness of racial equality was initiated because one woman sat down and said, I will not wake up and give my seat to you because of the color of your skin. And the revolution started. You have the power to bring about transformation in Cameroon if you understand why you even exist. This is what hope does to an individual that believes in a better tomorrow for their children, for their community, for their existence. They are willing to stand up and do things the right way. Rosa Parks did not stand up to say, I want to split America. Rosa Parks did not stand up to say, I want to fight the white man. He said, this attitude has to go away because this nation must change. That is the change that she sought after. One man, Martin Luther King, stood up at the Lincoln Memorial, a reverend, and made a speech, I have a dream. That speech transformed how we see America today. It was not a speech of cessation. It was a speech of unity. Addressing the status quo. My hope is that Cameroon becomes a nation where you are not given opportunities because of the language that you speak, because of your last name, because of the part of the country that you come from, but because you deserve that opportunity. That is my hope for Cameroon. That French-speaking Cameroonians and English-speaking Cameroonians together can cooperate and build a more inclusive society. That is my hope for Cameroon. That everyone in Cameroon, regardless of where you find yourself, you can call Cameroon a home because of the opportunities that are at your disposal. That is my hope. So hope, what is hope? Hope is not a destination. It is a journey of resilience and determination. Hope is not the absence of challenges, but the courage to face them head on. Hope is not a passive wish, but an active force that drives us forward. Hope is not a solitary act but a shared light that illuminates our path. Hope is not blind optimism, but the steadfast belief in possibilities. Hope is not the denial of reality, but the refusal to be defined by it. Hope is not a fleeting emotion, but a Steadfast anchor in turbulent seas. Hope is not about avoiding failure, but embracing it as a stepping stone to success. Hope is not about waiting for miracles, but recognizing the power within ourselves to create change. Hope is not a passive state of mind, but an active choice to keep moving forward despite all odds. That is hope. That is hope. My question to you as agents of hope, nation builders, are you going to have the hope that gives you the courage to be different? Because hope will propel you to act differently. You will not just say what everybody else is saying. You will not do what everybody else is doing. That is conventional. 
Hope gives you a different perspective that changes your rhetoric and how you see life. For those who say God has the final say, if it ought to be, it's up to God. God is the one that will change this country. God is the one that will install the next president. For those who share that ideology, I have a message for you. You are practicing a form of Christianity that is called Christian escapism. Right? Christian escapism, what does that mean? This, these are people that feel like they have no responsibility because they are Christians. They have no social responsibility. They have no political responsibility. They have no economic responsibility. They have no responsibility and so everything is up to God. The entire idea of Christianity is to bring heaven on earth. It's not to die and go to heaven. These individuals live for heaven. They don't live to transform earth. Heaven is a reward. You were placed here on earth for a purpose. If all God wanted was to save you and take you to heaven, the very moment that you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you should drop dead so that you can be with the Lord. God saved you for your community. God saved you for Cameroon. God saved you for your nation. That is why God saved you. So you might not understand the trend of philosophy that you are modeling. Because that pastor that brought that message to you did not explain to you what that is all about. It is called Christian escapism. It refers to the tendency of some Christians to withdraw from the realities of the world. Seeking refuge in spiritual activities or beliefs as a means of avoiding or ignoring the challenges, responsibilities, or sufferings of life. This concept can manifest in various ways within Christian communities. And number one. The overemphasis of the afterlife. They are here, but they are always constantly talking about the time they will be in heaven. They are not present on earth. When you are focused on what God placed you on earth here to do, because when you are saved, you ought to be out there in the world using the gifts and the talents that God has put in the inside of you to make your community better. That is sound theology. God sent his son so that anyone that believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. He was on earth doing the work. You are on earth to do the work. For those who think we should leave it to God or Christians should not be involved in politics, if you know what you are doing, get engaged. If you are in business, you know what you are doing, get engaged. When the ambas break into your church, they take you down. Shouldn't you be involved to bring about transformation in your community? When the government passes a law, it affects your church, affects your community, affects the Christians that come into your church. Shouldn't you be engaged to set into place proper laws that can help govern your community? Christian escapism. Look up that word and read what it's all about. Number two, avoidance of social issues. They avoid rather than actively engaging in addressing social justice, poverty, environmental concerns, some Christians may retreat into a spiritual bubble, focusing solely on personal piety and religious rituals. They run away from responsibility. Christians that were actively engaged changed America. Changed some of the great nations that you see around the world. Some of the greatest scientists came out of Christianity. Did you know that? Albert Einstein is, comes from the descendants of Jews. 
most of the Christians that transformed this world had the Judea worldview. Did you know Mark Zuckerberg comes from a Jewish background? They believe in hard work. We don't know that. Christian escapism. Run away from responsibility. God will not be happy with you because tomorrow when you arrive heaven, the first thing is the saints will take you around and you are going to see a room filled with all the gifts and the talents that God put in the inside of you that you would have manifested on earth and bring about transformation and you did not. You will see the army general you would have become if you were engaged in bringing about transformation. You will see the journalist that you would have become if you were engaged in bringing about transformation. You will see the businesses that you would have built if you were engaged in your communities to bring about transformation. God put you on earth to bring about change. To be engaged in every aspect of society that you're competent in and bring about change. Pastors, I have a question for you. If you are a mechanic and your car breaks down, would you go down and fix that car? Or you would try to call a mechanic because it is worldly to fix your vehicle. If you are a cook and you can cook food, would you say that is worldly? You want to go to a restaurant or call a cook because it is worldly and carnal. Mindset shift. We need this in our community like never before. We are trying to change the government. We have to work on ourselves first. Great people make a great nation, not the other way around. As we work hard to become better, honest, realistic individuals, we will create a better system for ourselves. Start working on yourself before you work on the government. And I want to talk about the idea of fixed mindset, which is what I see in our nation. We believe the resources are finite. Money is finite. That is, it is limited. You can count the amount of money that Cameroon will ever have. That is a scarcity mindset. There is more than enough for everyone in Cameroon if we think deep. If we start acting deep. If we cooperate deep, keep all these opinions aside and engage in active transformation. Do not escape from responsibility. Not only do Christians escape from responsibility, the citizens of Cameroon escape from responsibility. We have to get engaged. No matter where you come from, you can initiate change in that country. That is why when you hear me speak, the only thing that comes to your mind is politics and government. You don't think that a citizen can love their country so much that they stand up to initiate change. This is a concept far-fetched from your belief. You think they must be paid. You think they have an agenda. You think they want money. You don't believe that this is patriotism and someone will have genuine love for their country and understands what is going on and knows what needs to be done and can initiate change to bring about that transformation. This concept has not yet crossed your mind. And again, I want to keep repeating. If what you think I should say and what I should do is sufficient, it would have worked for you and worked for your nation. So those who practice Christian escapism they also withdraw from culture. They are preoccupied with the end times. They neglect personal responsibilities. Some of them can be extremely lazy because they are focused only on the end time. So this is time for you to start evaluating your perspective about God as you hear this message so that you will not waste your time on earth. There are many Christians that said, do not do this. But the pastors and the Christians that understands that we should be actively involved in bringing about change are saying, pastor, head on. And we will change that nation. We are already getting victories everywhere. 
If you are slow, you'll be left behind. We are moving like a train. Cameroon will be better. And if we have to cooperate with the government, we will. Because you only change your friends, you don't change your enemies. The people that you consider your enemies, try to become friends with them. You can influence the better by becoming friends than labeling yourself as an enemy. I remember a beautiful story about uh, Steve Jobs. He was an enemy with Microsoft, with Bill Gates. They were rivals. But when Apple was about to go bankrupt and they needed money, Steve Jobs went to Bill Gates and said, lend me some money. My company is going down. The whole idea is that we want to make America and the world a better place. And this product that I am producing can help solve complex problems around the world. Will you lend me that money? And Bill Gates invested $150 million into Apple. Invest. When you want to make Cameroon a better place, you should keep this petty idea about enemies of the state or hating on the government and try to thrive for the greater good for the whole nation. If you have been one-sided your whole life, it is hard for you to arrive at this position. But this message is designed to challenge your thinking so that you can take a different approach to this problem that we have been dealing with for over 60 years now. The Bible reminds us in Isaiah that my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. For those who have thought about how God, God's ways should look like, how people who come in the name of God should act, if you understand how they should act, then that is not God. That is you. You are trying to play God. If you have a fixed way that you think God should operate, then you are God. And that is another power move that you are trying to play. You are trying to play God. God's ways are not your ways. And the way he thinks is not the way you think. And the best way for you to get results is to change the way you've always thought about God. We have thought about God the wrong way in Cameroon for a very long time. Especially those who have been approaching me, the way we have always seen God is wrong. God's ways are not your ways. And if your ways has not been working for you, then that is not God's way. That is your way. Isaiah 55, 8, 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. Anytime you think and act and talk about how people who come in the name of God should behave and act, you are playing God. You are God. You've assumed the status of God. The very first time Jesus preached his first sermon, they wanted to throw him down the cliff. Because their whole idea will raise an army like David did, like all the leaders of Israel did. We have to raise up an army and go fight the Roman authorities. Jesus Christ lived within that colonial era and did not challenge the Roman authorities. His ways were not their ways. And for this mission to make Cameroon great, my ways will never be your ways. What God has shown me as a strategy to liberate that nation, I will not succumb to your ways because your ways has not been working. Your ways has caused nothing but pain, confusion, hopelessness in our people. I will not do it in your way. So again, it should be less about going to heaven and more of bringing heaven to earth. That is the message of hope I bring for us. The Bible says, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
not die and go to heaven. When disciples were asking Jesus, how should we pray? They, he told them that let thy will be done on earth. We don't read this, right? We've never seen this. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will be done on earth. You are here to make earth like heaven. Read your Bible right down to Revelation. You are here to make this a city, to build it, to transform it, to change it, to influence it, to make your mark on earth. Scarcity mindset. You see me stand up, you think this is the only one. No, stand up on your platform. Do the same thing. Let us have love, power, energy, confidence, courage, initiative, vision, mission, and change our nation. Every young person, this is time for you guys to rally behind this vision so that we can set the foundation for the nation that you will lead tomorrow. Statistically, most presidents are always above the age of 40. If you're not there yet, stop thinking about the presidency. Stop thinking about becoming a president. Work hard. Build the country that we will see tomorrow. And be presidents and, and, and governors of, those nations, of that nation. Let's do that. Another thing I want to talk on, and then we'll wrap up this session. When people don't have hope, because the science of hope will help you avoid learned helplessness. Because you can learn to be helpless. And, and those who do not have hope, helpless. They are helpless. You cannot help other people if you are hopeless. So if you're hopeless, you help less. Does that make sense? So learned helplessness is a psychological phenomenon where individuals learn to believe that they have no control over their circumstances. Even when opportunities for change or improvement are presented this you understand what I'm saying when opportunities are presented these individuals believe that they have no control over circumstances a brother was chatting with me on Facebook and he went on and on with his opinion as to how he thinks this vision should look like and when I asked him okay so how do we go about achieving your vision he said we should have a meeting and bring good luck Jonathan in it. And I'm like, good luck Jonathan was raised to solve the problems Nigeria is going through. The problems Nigeria has, we do not have the same problem. Nigeria is made up of a nation where they speak only English. We are made up of a nation where we speak English and French. There is a clear distinction between Nigeria and Cameroon. And what works for Nigeria might not work for Cameroon. And I mean, I don't understand. You, you, you get what I'm saying? And this is the delusion that we find ourselves with. And yet we have opinions as to how things should work. So I'm making this message to clarify those with opinions. Have you tested it? Have you researched it? Do you think it can work? Where has it worked before? All of these are questions you should ask. Because the strategy that I'm using, is the strategy that has worked for my own life, has worked for my businesses, has worked for other great nations, and that is what I'm bringing to us. It is unconventional. It's not what you've known your whole life. Because if what you've known worked, Cameroon will be fine. My entire life, I've figured out ways to work with people that were deemed enemies. And that is exactly how God has blessed me. The ministry of reconciliation is in the Bible. That is the ministry God called you to. Reconciliation. Bringing people together. God's idea is to reconcile the world to himself. Read your Bible. And some people go pick patches into the Bible. I mean like they, they just pick scriptures everywhere. Put them together and create a narrative. And, and tell people this is what God says. No. The ministry of reconciliation. Look at the life of Jesus. That is the masterpiece. That is the man that exemplifies God. What God's heart and his mission is for humanity. Jesus Christ lived it on earth. The ministry of reconciliation. So learn helplessness 
is a, another key phenomenon that we are dealing with in Cameroon. So it's an attribution of hopelessness, lack of motivation, perpetuation of helplessness, and it has impact on your mental health. When you have no hope, learned helplessness, you can't even learn anything new because you believe that it will not work. You will use words like it will not work. And this kind of initiative or kind of thinking will make you to become envious without even noticing what is happening with you. You become jealous. You, you become very critical. You become very judgmental. You will fight people before you even think. You will get in your own way and ruin opportunities for yourself without even recognizing what is going on with you. Learned helplessness. Any new idea that you hear, the first thing is to attack it before you even think. Anyone that come up with an idea, the first thing for you to say is it will not work. Learned helplessness. You sit even in the classroom, it's just to regurgitate the information so that you get the certificate. You don't absorb the information so that it brings about transformation in your own life. Learned helplessness. The fact that you had an A does not mean the knowledge penetrated your soul. The fact that you were in church on Sunday did not mean the message got into your heart and transformed your own heart, your own life. First, the fact that you even read the Bible and you preach the gospel does not necessarily mean that gospel has transformed you as an individual. Learned helplessness. You will ask questions to people like, who do you think you are? If you know who you are, you should not be threatened about who others are. And what will happen is, sometimes the door will be open, and they say, go, you won't even walk out of an open door because you've been conditioned to think the door is always closed. It's like a scenario where a dog was tied around a chain to a tree. The dog was tied on that tree. One day the owner of that dog released the dog from that tree and the dog did not move. The reason is because the dog has been conditioned its entire life to be tied to that tree. And some of you, you live in this dispensation. You guys have demonstrated for the past seven to eight years that you are free people. Your actions might be wrong, but this entire movement is proof that you can take action in Cameroon without anyone stopping you. Why can't you do that for good? Why don't you, can't you do that to start businesses and transform your community? It is proof that you've been released from the chain that you were conditioned to think you were tied to your entire life. That is my message to you, that you are free. You are free to build businesses. People complain about the government. I've run a business in that country for years. Even why here in the United States of America and no government official has come to that business. You have to understand how the system works. Every country has a system. You have to understand that system before you can be successful within that system. Failure to read and understand that system if you get information about that system from a bar or from someone who has no clue about how the system in Cameroon works, that is your own demise. So I've said it. When... People become helpless. When people become hopeless, they become helpless. They're helpless. And I want to remind you that animals are the only ones with no hope. And they, they, they have the thinking that they have no control over their destinies. Animals, not human beings. 
God never designed you to get to the state of mind where you believe that you have no control over circumstances. You have no control over your life. You have no control over your community. You have no control over your country. God never designed human beings to function in that capacity. Animals are designed to function in that capacity. And if you think you're helpless, then you're close to becoming an animal. So think again. No one believed some years ago that there will be a platform like Facebook. These individuals thought their way through inventing Facebook. It was tough and challenging. These people did not come from the sky. They were human beings that were given birth to like you and I. Some people think it's America. It's not America. There are some people who travel to America for, for 60, 80 years and nothing penetrates them. It's not about America. It's about the individual. And, and this is something I thought I clarified to our people. Your entire life, when you hear about people traveling to America, you only see two groups of people returning back to Cameroon. Number one, you see the people that come back and build the house, come with the car, they are bush followers, and you see them around town driving. That is number one. Number two is the people that come back with ideologies that enforces your victimhood. You've rarely seen people like me come back from America because we came here and asked the question, what works in this country? I don't just want to get stuck in a job and make a living and come back home and prove to people that I fell bush. No, I came here to ask what makes this country work? And that is what I'm bringing to you. It's hard work, it's determination, it's belief, it's hope. The science of hope, the people learned it. They learned how to be hopeful. And because of that, they were creative to produce what we see today. Individual responsibility, taking care of your children, taking care of your wife, being a good husband, being a good wife, dress decent, listen to quality content that changes your thinking every day, read good books, they don't tell you this. The people that you've always seen, you either see them in the bar with their beautiful cars. You don't hear them saying the things I'm saying to you. But diving deep into the psychology of what makes America tick are individuals that will read 24 books every year. People that will go into their garage, they are not worried about what they wear which is what I see many young people obsessed about. They are not worried about what they wear. They are not worried about the house that they live in. They can stay in their parents' garage and come out with a company like Apple Computer in a garage. They just need a space to think. There are people like Elon Musk came from South Africa to America and said we will sleep even on the floor and build something that will change this country. Now we have electric cars everywhere. We, did, we thought everything was minerals and the soil that is fixed and finite. He said, no, we can drive a car today without necessarily using gasoline. That is what I tapped into while here in America. What makes this country work? It's individuals will hope. The technology you have on your mobile phone is more powerful than the technology that sent man the first man into space. Did you know that? All we know about this mobile device is to browse on social media, make calls, watch videos. The technology in that cell phone that you are holding has the power more than the technology that was used to send man into space. You can do amazing stuff today just with the cell phone you're holding in your hand. They don't preach this to you. They don't tell you that you got it. My message of hope to you, the science of hope is that you can learn these behaviors. That's why I'm talking about hard work because it's only through hard work that you change your condition. Imitate your creator. 
imitate God, my friends. Imitate Jesus Christ. He created you to be creative. That is why God made you. Today, go out and show a small act of kindness. Because when you are hopeless, when you start helping people, you will realize that you have more to offer than what you thought you didn't have. It's like the person that was crying that I don't have shoes. And you're crying, I don't have shoes, I don't have shoes. And then you're walking down the street and then you meet someone who do not even have the feet to wear those shoes. You have something to offer. If you can breathe, you got something to offer. If you can speak, you have something to offer. If you can walk with your two legs, you have something to offer. If you went to school, you can think. If you have a hand walk, you have something to offer to make Cameroon great. Illiterates have made bomb to destroy buildings, to destroy armor cars in this generation. Illiterates that never went to school. They know how to put chemicals together and create a weapon in Cameroon, in this dispensation. There is no excuse as to why we cannot be great. With the technology available, there's no reason, no excuse why we cannot move the GDP of that nation from four to five billion US dollars to one trillion dollars with every opportunity and technology and resources that we have at our disposal. You can create friends with someone from America, any Western nation, just with your mobile phone today and network with them and change ideas, exchange ideas and bring about transformation in your community. Today, today, there is no excuse. That is how gradually America was built. It was not a government pressing a magic button. Because if you think that we have a magic button that we can push and then that country will change, you are wasting your time. If they have sold you some Marxist socialistic idea that some, some concept, some euphoric concept is going to transform that nation, you are wasting your time. There is no magic button to push, and the whole nation changes. One step at a time, one block at a time. That is how we build. So go out today. It might be inviting someone to our WhatsApp group so that they can start taking the classes that we are offering for free. That is where change starts. That is where change starts. When we have a unique mindset about the possibilities that lie before us. Away with everything that you've been told that it will never work in Cameroon. Abolish that kind of thinking. Don't entertain any conversation that has to do with people telling you that it cannot work in Cameroon. Yes, if you thought that way, we will prove in this generation that it can work in Cameroon. If it worked for Americans, it can work for Cameroonians. If it worked for England, it can work for Cameroon. If it worked in France, it can work in Cameroon. If it worked in China, it can work in Cameroon. That is what we are seeing. That is the nation we are building. That is the community we are building. And I want to let you know that if you claim to be a nobility, you cannot be part of this community. This is a new breed of individuals we are building. We will all abide by the law of that nation. We will respect our elders. Respect our heroes. But we will be fearless at the same time. We will challenge the status quo if need be. We will reform laws if need be. But we want to build a nation that is inclusive and conducive for every Cameroonian, regardless of where you come from. Even immigrants within our communities, we want you, we need you. Cooperatively, we will build that country. If you found Cameroon a place you can call home, we welcome you. Regardless of the country you come from. That is the community we are building. What I'm sharing with you works. You understand what I'm saying? It works. It works. It is the only way that we can be able to be free from poverty and stagnation. The research is in depth, and this is what will make us great. Any other idea will not work. 
it is hard for us to believe that one of us can stand up raised by God to bring about transformation. And I want to say it is hard work, cooperation, step by step, one block at a time. That is how we change Cameroon. Devouring books, reading and researching, taking over industries. That is how we build Cameroon. 90% of the jobs in America are is created in the private sector. 90%. They've never told you this. Has anyone told you this? No. I'm asking you the questions, brethren. Has anyone from the diaspora that is leading you in whatever movement told you that 90% of jobs right here in America is created by the private sector and just 10% or less by the government? They've never told you this. These are facts. It has no emotion. It is concrete facts. That is my message for you. Hope. We can learn it. When something is an art, sometimes it is difficult to grasp. But when it moves from arts to becoming science, then it is something we can learn. The science of hope. You might hear that word science and it looks complex. It simply means there is patterns that you can identify and we can learn them. Science indicates it can be duplicable. It can be replicated. You can model it, you can learn it. You can learn to wake up every morning and don't listen to junk. Listen to some comedy but rather listen to something positive that helps improve an area of your life. In sales, in marketing, in science, in technology, in construction, in farming, agriculture, in finance, whatever that desire in your heart is, you can have hope every morning, getting up, inspiring yourself with content that tilts you towards the direction of your dreams. Hope is learnable. The science of hope. That is my message to you all today. That is my message for you, Cameroonians. That is what I believe. That is the hope that lies within me. That is the nation that I see. Moving from a GDP of 45 billion US dollars to one trillion dollars in the private sector. We will do this with little or no government support. Government did not sponsor the war for us. We did. We can do that. We can have our own bank, save our money in that bank. We can train individuals in the seven industries that are transforming the global economy. In agriculture, renewable energy, real estate and construction, uh, finance, uh, media arts and entertainment. We can build Companies in these industries, train individuals in these industries, if possible, bring people from abroad to Cameroon who are experts to train our people so that we can develop businesses in Cameroon and free our nation from poverty. We can do it. If there is anything you have proved to me for the past seven to eight years that you can put your money together and do something, and that is enough. When these people are trained, we can lend the money out of this bank because we can trust their competence. They will go on to build businesses and come back with some profit and you will get a return on your investment in that bank. You have some dividend. We will adjust the interest rates for those who have been trained so that they can go out there and be creative and productive. We will cooperate with the government. This is where the government comes in to regulate the taxes in the seven industries so that we can experience less inflation. Inflation will be low in these industries. The taxes will be low in these industries. While the import of goods in these industries are going to be tightened up so that those who are in these industries can thrive 
and you will have enormous opportunity to benchmark with other developed nations, work for other developed nations, work with other developed nations, because these seven industries connect you with the world. That is my plan for our country. It works. South Korea chose a similar path. It worked for them. This is something different, but it, it, you can look at a nation that chose something similar to what we are doing. They chose about three industries and focused on those industries and became one of the best in the world. It works. Follow what works. Stop trying to be too creative about the, the whole thing and just follow what works. When you follow what works, and then you can be creative after you've done what worked and your economy is better and then you can be creative. It's like a child that was born. You teach them how to creep. After you teach them how to stand up. And then you teach them how to walk. And then you teach them how to run. If that child gets up tomorrow and become a dancer, they are using the same two legs to make different moves. But this pattern of creeping, standing, walking, and running is the blueprint. You have to master this. After that, whatever you do with your legs is up to you. Samuel Etofis became a soccer player. That is what he could do with those same legs. Is what I'm saying making sense? Follow what works. When you got it all together, you can be creative. We need you. We need your help. We need your partnership. We need your cooperation so that you can be all that God created you to be. Partner to change your life. Partner to change your destiny. Partner to change your children's future. Partner and stop complaining. Partner so you will never call yourself a victim again. It is the government by the people is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. That is the government that we believe in. You, people, you. That is what it means. That you are the people. It's the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. I love you guys so much. I'm praying for you, for those who wanted to hear about the pastor side of me. I think this message drives the point home. We need practical Christianity, not escapism, trying to escape from the world so fast that you abstain from responsibility. You were created to make a difference here. And if there's anything, I want to let you know God is for you. Yeah, he got this. And he's going to be with you every step of the way. So until next time, guys, I encourage you to stay blessed. Never give up on your dreams. Never give up on your dreams. Never give up. I know it's going to be strong, but do not give up. I know they will insult you, but do not give up. They will tell you you are not enough, but do not give up. You are going there. You will get there. Those who thought you would be a failure, they will watch you rise. I promise you. United we stand. Divided we fall. Let's unite for a common good.